finding good quality armor and weapons for reenactment can be really hard. There isn't a lot of bricks and mortar stores in Australia, and buying online can be hit and miss. In today's video, we're going to do a review of the Medieval Shop's Frankia Axe, that is this one right here. G'day everyone, my name is Ben and welcome to Medieval Mayhem. On this channel, you'll find lots of videos into the whole medieval period. You'll find reviews into other people's gear, you'll find crafting videos into making your own costumes, you'll find DIY videos into making your own furniture, you'll find how-to videos into all sorts of medieval camping and that kind of thing. We do videos for, we analyse historical events, what happened, who were the key players and why did things turn out the way that they did. So if medieval is your thing, this is the channel for you and you might want to consider subscribing. I've been looking around for some axes for my medieval group. I've also been looking around for some good recommendations for my friends and family, something my kids can use. I wanted an axe that uh, could be used not just as a fighting axe, but could also be used around the campsite not to things like chopping wood, bashing in nails, bashing in ten pegs, doing a bit of crafting work with. Historically, it's also looking at uh, a wider range of uses too. And this is one of the axes that I've come up with. I'm really quite happy with this. If you look at the, um, the profile of the, the axe head itself, you can see there's a really nice um, teardrop shape on the, on the axe handle. What that means is that I have a lot of feedback as to exactly where the axe is pointing at any given time in relation to the target. Why is that important? Well, if the axe is going to strike non-perpendicular, then I can lose control of my weapon and that's really, really dangerous in any kind of fight training environment. It is a sharp axe, so if you want to use it for fight training, you're going to have to dull it down and round off the corners. Otherwise, it should be fine, but please check with the rules for your medieval group. Let's take a look at some specs. The handle itself is 51 centimeters long, and the weight is just 811 grams. I find that really fantastic. I don't like a heavy axe. This is really, really good. So 21 centimeters on the axe head itself, and it costs just $71 Australian, which I find really, really effective. I think it's a really well priced piece of kit uh, and I think there is some really good value for money there. When you look at this, it's obviously not made from a medieval iron per se. That is said, it's still made from uh, a more modern iron and I like that. It does give you the impression of a very realistic and authentic item from history and I think that's, that's really important as a medieval reenactor. If we take a look at the handle, we should be able to see the tooling marks that a blacksmith has used when he's been creating this particular item. When we also take a look at the shape of the axe itself, this is not the axe of Hollywood. This is not the axe of the TV series and the movies and that kind of thing. Instead, we have an axe here which is something out of the history books. And this is something which you'll probably find uh, looking very comparable to museum exhibits around the world. I really like this. Uh, and this is something which not only could be used in, in an encampment environment and not only can be used in defense, it's also something that can be used for butchering animals, it can be used for uh, cutting timber, it can be used for cutting firewood. I find this just a really nice piece of kit and I highly, highly recommend it. I'm giving this 8 out of 10. And I really think that is something that you should consider if you're into reenacting the early medieval period. Righto guys, I really hope you enjoyed today's video. Please like, subscribe and share. I'll catch you in my next video.